Thank you, General Dean. Now recognize Captain Timothy Nick for five minutes. Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee, my name is Timothy Nick and I'm a captain in the Army National Guard. I'm here today to aid the subcommittee in resolving factual errors in the official record of what happened on January 6, 2021, <coughs> specifically regarding the alleged District of Columbia National Guard delayed response caused by critical presidentially appointed Senate confirmed Pentagon senior officials. I was concerned by the events that unfolded that day on the United States Capitol. As a federal officer of the United States Secret Service and a former state trooper with the Florida Highway Patrol, my heart goes out to all law enforcement officers, sisters and brothers that held the line that day to restore public order to the chaos. I'm here today with my counsels, Lachlan McKillen and Dan Meyer of law firm Tully Rickney. The firm has advised me beginning with my role as a comp confidential source to the select committee to investigate the January 6 attack on the United States Capitol. When my confidentiality was breached, it was Dan who, who intervened to ensure I was protected as a military whistleblower. First, I want to explain my role on January 6. I was assigned as aide de camp, the personal assistant to Major General William Walker, the commanding general of the DC National Guard. It was my only second day on the job. Please focus on alleged facts about found in the November 16th, 2021 Department of Defense Inspector General's multidisciplinary review into the DC National Guard response and Department of Defense's role that day. I can say unequivocally that the Inspector General's review is riddled with inaccuracies, misstatements, and perhaps false flags and narratives regarding how critical Pentagon senior officials responded when our Republic was under great stress. For instance, during a conference call at 2.31 p.m. with members of the United States Army, U.S. Capitol Police, Metropolitan Police Department, District of Columbia Government, and U.S. Secret Service Uniform Division, the U.S. Army's Lieutenant General Walter Pyatt, Director of Army Staff, and the Army's Lieutenant General Charles Flynn, Director of Chief of Staff of Operations, were on the call. Also on was Colonel John Lubis, Executive Officer to the Secretary of the Army. The Army falsely denied that General Flynn was ever on the call. This is false and material on its face. Lieutenant Flynn was on the call and even participated in discussions. The Defense Inspector's Review also rounds language papering over the fact that Lieutenant General Pyatt and Lieutenant General Flynn, while on the call, discussed how they did not like the optics. That is a direct quote. And they stated it would be in their best military advice to recommend to the Secretary of the Army, Ryan McCarthy, to deny the request from Command General William Walker to deploy the D.C. National Guard and aid U.S. Capitol Police in restoring restoration of order, liberty on Capitol Hill. In addition, former Secretary of the Army Ryan McCarthy claims he was on a 2.31 p.m. call and spoke on that call. This is false, unless he was in the room shadowing the call and he did not speak nor identify himself. He was not on the call. He was en route to Washington, D.C. Regional Office at the Federal Bureau of Investigation to support that agency's concept of operations plan for January 6. He wanted on to claim that he called and spoke to Major General Walker at least twice, ordering the deployment of the D.C. National Guard. This is also false. At no time did General Walker take any calls, nor did we ever hear from the Secretary on any of the ongoing conference calls or the secure video teleconferencing throughout the day. This I know because I was with the Command General the entire time recording events. Throughout the day, Major General Walker told by staff officers to stand by with respect to deploying to the Capitol Hill. Only at 5.09 p.m. in the early evening, which I wrote down in my wheel book, was the D.C. Guard given order to deploy and move to the Capitol to assist Capitol Police. We arrived too late. One American lay dead with other sisters and brothers injured, including federal and local law enforcement officers. We were ready and standing by. I know if we were able to deploy immediately when General Walker made the request, the National Guard could have helped end civil disturbance and restored public order quickly. The Army National Guard motto is always ready, always there. The D.C. National Guard was ready to help and assist Capitol Police, but we were not allowed to do our job due to paralyzed decision-making by Acting Secretary of Defense Chris Miller and Secretary of the Army Ryan McCarthy. This led to federal leadership in the Pentagon. This led to a crisis in federal leadership at the Pentagon and delayed the D.C. response by three hours and 19 minutes. Thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today and articulate the facts as they happened. I look forward to answering any questions you may have. Thank you, Captain, and uh, as we begin our question session, I want to reemphasize how much we appreciate 
uh, all of you coming forward. I know as a veteran of the Armed Forces myself, this takes a, an incredible amount of courage uh, to come forward and tell the truth. Uh, we'll now